Welcome to Computer Architecture. In this mini lecture, we are going to introduce operations in MIPS. So what is MIPS? MIPS is the language that we use to communicate with computers, which we call it assembly language. And here is one example of the instruction, which is add A, B, C. And then the pseudocode is that you are going to do the sum of V plus C and then put that values inside A. So there are three variables, A, B, C, and then there are actually two concepts inside this instruction, which is summing B plus C, and then you are moving or copying the sum into A. And then here, it's very simple, but in terms of architecture, in terms of design, you want to ask these big questions. Remember, we are talking about von Neumann architecture, right? So we need to think about how do we represent numbers? How do we represent operations or instructions? And where should we store those variables? And then how do we move or assign all those values for those variables? And in terms of MIPS, that we are going to focus on, there are 32 registers that we can use. And in terms of memory, where we can store data and instructions is two to the power of 30. And then one important thing is that the memory relies on the byte addresses. And there are different type of operations for MIPS. There are arithmetic one, there are data transfer, there are logical operation, and then there's a conditional branch like if, and there's also unconditional jump where you can jump to a certain instruction. And before we talk about each operation and the purpose of the operation, we want to first understand the design principles underlying of the, of the MIPS assembly language. The first is the simplicity. Usually simplicity, is the first class citizen. And then the second one is that smaller things or smaller components is usually faster. Of course, it's not always like that, but in general, this is a golden rule. And then the third one is that the, there are many different cases to consider, but usually we want to make a common case fast. And then the final one is that when you do the design, you cannot be good at everything. There will be trade-offs. So the good designs really requires making good trade-offs or good compromises. Now let's back, get back to MIPS. In terms of MIPS, there are the notion of word, which is an instruction. And then it's a primitive unit of doing computation. And then the way that MIPS specify those operations or instruction is a group of 32 bits. I think we are going to see 32 zero or ones. And then the reason that's 32 is that it's matching the register size in the MIPS architectures that we are going to focus on. And the first the under, uh, terminology or concept to understand is called operands. And those operands must be stored from a limited number of special location. If you remember the A, plus A equals to B plus C example, right? Operand like A, B, C, those are variables. So where are those things stored? Okay. And in terms of MIPS design, those special locations are called register. To be more precisely, Registers are the primitives in the hardware. And then the programmer, when we write a program, actually we can kind of directly access those, at least when you are doing assembly language. And from the book, it's actually called a bricks of computer construction. And then one important thing to remember is that when we do the arithmetic computation, the variables, that need to be inside or stored inside the register. 
That's what it means by arithmetic occurs only on the register. And there are many different types of register in MIPS. Then usually uh, we represent that is we have a dollar sign and then also a name. And usually if when by convention, the S0, S1 correspond to variables that we use in high level language like C and Java. And then T0, T1 means the temporary register. And then here you want to pause a bit to think about why do we really need to have temporary registers? And then what are some other types of registers that uh, usually can be that usually can be formed in MIPS? And then we have register, and then another important concept or component is called memory. Then here you want to ask uh, what's the difference between memory and register? And why do we even need to have a memory? And then in terms of memory, right? Remember, the computer certain computation can only be done on register. So we need to have data transfer operation to move data between memory and register. And then remember that MIPS use a address, unique address to identify a memory location, and then it use a byte address. Okay. So in terms of mental model, you should think of like you have a huge array. And then it's one dimensional. And then the index of each component of your array, it's an address, memory address to be more precise. Now, in order to move data, then you have one. Then this load operation, it means that I can copy the data or move the data from memory to a register. So it's LW in terms of assembly language. It's called low word. It's an abbre abbreviation. So the representation is that you have low word, the register where the data is in at right now. And oh, sorry, where the data that you want to move to. And then you have the memory location that you specify. And then the pseudocode is that uh, I'm going to access the F element inside mem where man is a, you can think about it as a pointer or it's a best address, is that stored inside S3. So this tells you which location of in the memory that you want to get the data and move that data into the temporary register T0. And here an imp important concept is called alignment. And then virtually, like all the computer architecture that we are using nowadays, you address, you use like by individual bytes. Okay. Then remember the mental model, the memory is a, a sequen one dimensional sequential array. So when we use this address, then the se it's a sequential word differ by four. Okay. So that means that implies in MIPS, when you think about the words, when you think about data inside a memory, it must start at address that are multiple of fours. If you go back here, eight, it's a multiple of four, okay? Then alignment restriction means that the data must align on the natural boundary of your array. The data cannot be across, stored across the, across the boundary, then here is an illustration. You have by address that tells you which location of the memory that you are going to access. And then on the right hand side is the data that's stored inside each address. So the first one, first data stored by address zero, which is also the base address that we saw in the previous slide. And then the next one start with four, the next one start with eight. Okay, so that's the idea of alignment and memory address. Now we know about low and then the complementary operation is called store. So you have store word and then this is the register called S1. And then again, this is how you specify the memory location where it's 20 and then you have best address S3 here, okay? 
Then now, remember this is a complementary to low. Now you already know low. Then what will be the pseudo code of this operation? Then once you understand the concept of store word, then now consider this pseudo code is that I want to have the sum of edge, which is a variable that's stored inside S2, and then the data inside array A, which is that the, where the base address is stored inside S3, and then it's the eighth byte. Then I want to put the sum here into A12. Okay, so you should think about like how to use MIPS instructions, MIPS assembly language to represent this pseudocode. Now, the next important operation is a constant or immediate operands, right? Many times from the memory, we might want to just load a constant. Then here we have a special instruction just to do that, which is called add immediate. And then the way the, uh, the syntax for that is add, add i, like the uh, dollar sign s3, and then S3 and four. What that means is that I'm going to copy uh, the, the, this, uh, the variable that's inside, store inside S3 directly plus one constant and then store inside S3, okay? It's simple, but then if you dig in, you will ask that actually MIPS doesn't really have a subtract immediate operation. Why is that? And then another important thing is that in this zero is a very commonly used. So actually this register or actually register number zero is hardwired to represent a constant, constant value zero. All right, that's all for this lecture.